Hi, welcome back to Taronga TV. I'm with Matt Kettle, Unit Supervisor at the QBE Free Flight Bird Show and also Keeper Clay. Now we've got an amazing bird for you to meet today. It's an owl. People go nuts about owls. This owl is very, very special. It's a barking owl, Matt. Tell us about this beautiful bird. Well, this is Francis. Oh my goodness. Francis is about two years old. <laughs> barking owls are quite widespread throughout Australia, throughout mainland Australia. They are probably considered the second most common owl in Australia and often found quite close to people. In parts of the country, they're actually classed as vulnerable, but up in the top end, they're actually considered quite common. Now, is he going to fly back to clay now? Yep. He's so beautiful. Absolutely exquisite markings there. Oh, what sort of habitat would they live in, Matt? Well, this is very much an open woodland bird. So the paddle-shaped wings are brilliant for turning and flapping between trees, but not dense like rainforests. We, we're talking about, you know, the things you could imagine of existing along the Murray-Darling when that was all nicely forested and other parts of the country, like up in the top end, those open woodlands. Now, although primarily a bird hunter, it also will eat a lot of insects. It loves to eat gliders and possums. Maybe a ringtail possum is the big end of its diet. Okay. Absolute silent flyer. Yeah. Can't even hear it. No, I mean, and all owls share that characteristic of silent flight. Um, they have specially designed feathers that actually disrupt the air into tiny, small amounts. So the single edge along each flight feather is frayed. So rather than like waving a stick through the air and it makes a noise, all those tiny little frayed edges create tiny little disruptions, so small that it basically makes the bird completely silent. What sort of habitat do they nest in? What do they need? That's a really yeah. important thing, I think, to share with people. Well, the parts of the country that they're actually struggling in are those that they're losing nesting sites. So in Victoria, they're considered endangered. They're heading the same way here in New South Wales. This particular bird relies upon old trees, 150 year old or more, to produce large hollows to raise two to three chicks. Also, most of their prey is hollow reliant. So hollows are disappearing. We're also not very good at replacing them or letting trees get old enough to produce them uh, for the next generation. Artificial nest sites is helping many creatures, not just ours. Uh, but without that, we're going to see continued downward trends as we're seeing in Victoria and New South Wales. Fortunately, not as many people in other parts of the country. So Queensland, Northern Territory, Western Australia, these birds are actually considered of least concern. But they're still a great concern here for us. And it would be a shame to think we could lose them in New South Wales. Yeah. They are so beautiful. I suppose what a really important thing on Taronga TV that we like to share with people, Matt, is what people can do, they're at home right now, what they could do to help birds like owls and other species of birds in their own backyard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the main things is if you have cats and dogs, just think about where are they? You know, many animals are vulnerable. We think our big, fat, lazy cat is not particularly dangerous to wildlife, but when it switches into mode, there's not a lot that isn't at risk. Yeah. So keeping your cats inside or if they're outside, considering have a, having some type of aviary for them, keeps your cat safe from other cats, won't get hit by a car and he can live a longer, healthier life too. But also being aware that everything you do for wildlife will in turn help support predators. Predators need a healthy group of animals underneath them of all shapes and sizes so that they can live their lives to the best of their ability as well. So that's things that you can do at home, folks. There's one thing that I reckon everyone's sitting there at the moment thinking, what's that little wire hanging down off the back of that beautiful yeah. creature's leg? I'm going to let Matt explain that because that's really interesting. So that is a little tracking device. It only is worn by the bird when he comes out here to fly. It weighs six grams with the battery in it. So That's about three M&Ms, yeah, just for the record. Exactly. Now this particular bird weighs around 700 grams and can catch prey as heavy as himself. So carrying six grams like that just temporarily offers no duress whatsoever. But if he flies off for any reason, hides in the bushes, maybe a kookaburra scares him or a helicopter, we don't sort of wonder where he is. This tells us where he is. And so then we know we're looking in the right place. And his beautiful patterning can make, if he's quiet, unlike he is now, he can actually um, completely disappear if he sits still. And that's his main defence mechanism, is to flee and stay unnoticed. So if he does that successfully, we can't find him, even if he's only one metre from us. 
absolutely beautiful creature. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Francis. Francis is named after one of our incredible vets that saved its life. So another lo lovely little great story there. You never know what's around the next corner. We'll see you on Taronga TV soon. Bye now.